Whoo baby, it's a hot one today. Definitely making sure we're drinking a lot of water, but the exciting thing is, got that steel done over there. The boys whipped that out. We got all of our piers marked, our uh, brackets installed, and now we got the beam saw. We're gonna get these cedar columns cut so we can get our post and header done. And I just can't wait to get this thing framed up. We've been talking about it, now we're finally doing it. So let's get into it. Grade is nine foot six up plus seven and three sixteenths. So I'm gonna go ten foot one, three sixteenths. You know what this stuff always reminds me of, Zach? It always reminds me of grade school when the teacher would say, "Go sharpen your pencils. It's test time. We got bubbles to fill in." Is that what your teacher said? No, my teacher always told me to get your school done. Um, Moms can be so ruthless, can't they? You know how much easier it is to cut a two foot section off than to cut like a sliver? I'm going right down the line here, man, right here. I'm getting these, uh, the big boys done first. Okay, so this guy goes right here. No, right there. Wait, we already set that there? Yeah, that 12 foot is for that wall. That guy's for there. Oh, well, why? We didn't cut this though, did we? Uh, oh no, uh, Greg put that there. Yeah, yeah just, you can set that on top of there. Greg messing us up, go ahead. Yeah, keep going slowly, you know? Mm-hmm, sure. All right, Zach, let's find clean edges. I'm money on this end. Are you? All right. This one needs to be cut. How's that? Barely over eight foot. Barely over eight foot. Of course. Dude, this uh, Martinez... Uh, Pry bar is money for doing na uh, staples. Can I staples over here and pull out? Now, Zach, we got more in there, remember? So if we don't like two sides of one of these, we should probably swap one out. So this one, we don't need it anyway. So this one we'll go ahead and get rid of and then see if you can't find a, a good sided one. That's pretty. Now what I always try to do is find the ugliest side and make sure that that's gonna be on the top of the uh, the beam so right now I've already got all of our posts made now we're making the the actual kind of the header but it's not really going to be doing much structural work at all Put some sunblock on. That goes right here, Zach. I mean, no one's stopping you. You can be a farmer. You could be a farmer of men, Greg. Farmer of likes and follows on Instagram. That's right. You can be whatever you want on social media. Look, we're we're pretending to be post framers. What a pain, man. These cedar columns. Uh, if they're not exactly the dimension, they're just a sliver over. My 10-footers were like a sliver under. Uh, I'm used to having lumber come out like three quarters of an inch long. My 12-footers were longer. But this is a real pain when you're running 
this 16 inch blade and trying to cut a sliver off thankfully with the skill saw having that left blade uh, versus the right blade on the Makita beam saw I can get right in there it's super nice to see exactly what you're cutting Careful, Greg, don't stand on the top of that ladder. Nothing can stop me, I'm all the way up. Now, Greg, you gonna hold it? Yeah. yeah, I got it. I got the whole thing. Or eagle in this one? Nope. Whoa, whoa, what? <laughs> Pretty nice. Yeah. Sometimes we get lucky. Yeah, once in a while. Actually, we get lucky a lot. Just go ahead and uh, double check that, my dude. I'm going to show the YouTube world just what a miter looks like on some 6x6 feeder. With that kill saw. Well, we don't have to worry about that. Dude, these are 10 inch. These are gonna go in so deep. So <sighs> deep that what? Gonna not allow these to go anywhere? Okay, good call. Man, that is so pretty. I like it. That miter's tight. Oh, miter is looking fly. They still say fly? No. no. Lit. Litty? Fire. Dude, I mean. Really? You can't beat that. You can't beat the triple. You should try that little de DeWalt. Yeah, Zach, go grab that sucker. Yeah. In the trailer. I mean, this thing... This thing is a pure beast. That thing drives, man. <sighs> All right, this is the 12 volt. So this is a little baby drill. I've only got... You grab the one without any bars. Oh, there's two bars. We're gonna go ahead and sink this. We might kill it. There's a good possibility, but we're gonna we're gonna try it anyway. Hmm. I mean, it's, yeah, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a triple hammer, but that just drove that all the way in, dude. Like, I know it's cedar. I know there's so many like excuses that you could have as to why it did it, but the fact that it did it and it's do another one. Yeah, I probably just use all my battery though. Why not? Now you might be asking, why did we start out here at the corner instead of there at the building? Uh, that is because basically. There's no guarantee that this wall is perfectly plumb or laser straight from top to bottom. We plumb the building, we square the building, we know it's good at the roof line, we know it's good on our corners, but through the middle, from the bottom to the top, there could be, and I've talked about this, there could be a little movement in our wood. So if I start there with a perfect cut to go eight foot, eight foot, eight foot for a 24 foot porch, when I get out here, it might not be perfectly plumb. So what we do is we start out at the corner, We'll now plumb this up, make sure it's perfect, and we'll cut to fit that last one. So kind of, you know, taking the uh, 
any chance for error out of the equation and making it look good. Bump me right into your, uh, Right into that line there. Give me a sec, give me a sec, give me a sec, give me a second. Sorry, I'm just impatient. All right, so this is why we wait because, I mean, it's close, but we're an eighth inch from being perfectly plumb on our, on our main wall. So we're gonna cut this one at 95 and 7 eighths, not a full eight foot. Just like that. Might have to kind of come in at the same time. Does that go up? Go up a little higher, Zach. Keep coming. There we go. Okay. Got the multi-volt versus the 12 volt sub-atomic, or whatever it's called. Okay. Go ahead. Not gonna win a race, but let's do the job. Let's make sure we like the connection down there perfect. Greg, you gonna tell me how you like it? Does it come together pretty good? Like a, like a family. Yeah, like together. it's always been to be there? Oh yeah, it's good, dude, I like it. Okay, now, so what we gotta do is, Zach, grab that level, let's plumb up this column now that we've plumbed up that one way down there, and uh, let's hope Right about there is gonna be good as gold. What? Hey, look at that, dude, that's money. All right, so we just gotta cut our 45. I wanna know what died on that cedar. Well, I'm thinking that's probably like a rust or something, maybe. A rust? I don't know. Maybe like a stain? Could be the, could be the blood of our enemy. Let's hand Zach this, let's get our 45 cut, and then we'll keep going around the corner. All right, remember, just like this. Wait, 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 here. So I know. Okay. All right. Got a nice tank top hand going. Woo! I do? Yeah. You so you're saying I need to take my shirt off? You didn't spray your back, did you? Yeah, I did. I'll get a tan on the beach, Greg. I'm at the job site right now. Okay, now, do we like it? One, two, three. I'm a one bar battery and a 12 volt battery tool system and I just about murdered you. I've had no bars. Oh crap. Every once in a while. Got a little bit of a roll here we gotta correct, but I think it's gonna work. While you cut down here. That didn't work. Oh, there we go. There we go. Drop it. Lift it. Drop it. We'll get the planer there if we want. I'm gonna go ahead and hit my big bad boys here. But this time I'm gonna actually use Triple. The triple hammer, the games are over. I'm bringing out the big guns. There. I mean, there's just literally no stopping the triple hammer. Dude, I swear it got faster the further it went in. Yeah. It, it's amazing. All right, now everybody wanted to see this matchup. We've got the one and only 36 volt Metabo HPT 
formerly known as Hitachi. Uh, this is the triple hammer, the most sexy, actually not really that sexy, but the best all around drill in my opinion. And the new XDT16, this is super tiny. It's got selectable modes on the trigger, but I won't cheat and make it a slow mode for you, Greg. Let's go ahead and show the people what they want to see. Is this supposed to be on three or four? Four. Well, you're on three, so. It's... No. There we go. Okay, I'm even gonna go with my left hand. Okay. Can't wait. I got. Well, aren't my, you lefty? Got... No. On the count of, I'll let you do the count. I'll let you do the count. All right, one, two. Wait, are we going? Are we going on three? Or are we going on go? I'll say one, two, three, go. go. Okay, okay. 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 One, two, three, go. So there you go. Proof is in the pudding. That's a awesome drill. It's super tiny. It runs on a 18 volt battery versus the Metabo with the multi-volt 36 volt battery. It is a little bigger. It's a little heavier, but still feels good in your hand. It's only dual hammer, right? No, yeah, this is a triple hammer. This is a standard double hammer, but there's a lot of technology. Uh, I bet if it had another hammer. Well, maybe wouldn't. Makita should do that. Oh, remember those were the ones we uh, cut already. <laughs> what are the odds? That's just awesome. So now what I'll do is I'll set this guy here, going down to the uh, dirt below it, which will help distribute the weight. I'll get it tacked and then I'll put some 20 penny ring shanks right into the column. So now what this did was just gave me a nice little beam pocket. Basically, very simple but very effective. The 6x6 will go all the way to the column. It will set on this. We'll also come in with some more uh, fasteners from the backside. Um, yeah, it, this is sheer strength here. We're not carrying really any load. Uh, this valley is going to be carried off of this roof and that there's gonna be a truss over there and then I'm gonna cut a rafter in up here later. So really this is just for looks. It's a facade, the six by six beam, and this is gonna keep it in place for, for a long, long time. Okay, so you get that end. I'm gonna go up, Greg, and then we're gonna come back down in, but you're gonna to have to be, I'm gonna, ugh. You're gonna to have to come from a side or something. So you go to the, yeah, cause I, I can't go, I, I can't go up the fascias there. Okay, and now, like a glove, dude. Boom. Boy, that's pretty exact finger there, ain't it? What? That's pretty exact finger there, ain't that's it? That's right. <laughs> well, you find you found the shady spot, anyhow. That's dude. right. <laughs> yeah.
that way a little bit. All right, now that feels good. That is a great way to end the day. There's still a lot of work to do on this 30 foot pavilion that comes out the backside, but we got the main framing done, the trusses up. So hopefully tomorrow we'll get working on overhang, sheeting, and then I'll hopefully be tying in that valley that goes out to the garage. So definitely uh, you want to stick around for that. Stay tuned, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button uh, so you don't miss this one finish up. It's, uh, it's gonna be killer, and I'm excited to show it to you.